everybody. Welcome to Mr. Mark's Classroom. This is a podcast where we are able to invest in you and champion kids ministry. Today, I have a special guest for you because we're talking about how to create learning centers and what, what could we do in the classrooms? I, I feel like we've got teachers over and over that say, you know, I just don't like this stuff. I've got to come up with something else and all this stuff. And I'm like, how do we equip them? How do we help keep them on the path of what we're trying to teach? Well, early childhood education does come with a bit of complexity to it because uh, preschoolers learn through play. And when you set up all those learning centers, it's for a reason. So do it correctly, because we want the boys and girls to connect to the Bible content that we're trying to teach them. So today, my special guest is Miss Gina Pine, and she has been the preschool minister at Broken Arrow First Baptist for quite a while. How, hey, Gina, welcome. And how long have you been there? Thank you. I've actually been on staff for 23 years. No way! 23! Yes. 23 years. <laughs> I started in children's ministry and then moved to preschool. Wow, that's so great. Well, obviously, we've come to the right place today because your experience of how not to do it and how to do it are going to be very valuable to us. So don't hold anything back, okay? Oh, all right. <laughs> okay, well, start, start at the top and kind of walk us through when you're creating learning centers and maybe some of the things that you've had to teach your folks. Okay, well, one of the things is, we'll start at the beginning with just the purpose of a learning center. Um, they really need to encourage children to learn through interactive play and provide them with lots of different hands-on activities. Um, also, you know, we know that young children learn best when they're learning and they're experimenting um, and they're getting to do that with the things that are surrounding them. Yeah. Um, I think you have two different kinds of learning centers. One is teacher led, which is always fun, but we also have those that are child led. And so I think you need to provide a variety of those when you do that. Um, also, I think you need to consider, um, some of the factors you need to consider is your space. Um, I, you know, we have two different campuses here. Uh, one is a very small, is a small church, mm -hmm. and one is our, our large campus at the Broken Arrow campus. So floor space is a big deal. So you're gonna determine the number of learning centers and the materials you can have and the equipment just by simply how much square footage do I have in the classroom? Absolutely. Let me just say, I, I couldn't agree more. And I've had people who are like, we need more tables. We need more shelves. <laughs> like, no, wait. Every time you, you put more furniture in the room, you right. have less square footage. Like, right. There, there is an ideal number here because you've got to have square footage. Okay, so recently I visited a church, this pastor said, and they didn't have a preschool minister, but he said, could you just look at our preschool room? We, I, I, this can't be right. I just don't know what's, what to do. And so I walked in. Oh, oh my goodness. You would be shocked. I was shocked. And I was like, what do I say? I don't want to offend this pastor. I don't know. And so I looked around and then I looked at him and said, so what do you like about this room? And he <laughs> said, um, I, I don't know. It just looks like a big mess. And I said, okay, you're right. It's a big mess. It looks like a thrift store. Like people have dumped off toys right. that yeah. they didn't want at their house anymore. And there was broken stuff. I said, it was, it's more than a disaster. It is unsafe. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many kids you're putting in here. And he said, a lot. And I said, there's not enough room for anything. So we need to clear this out. I said, so the hardest part, we won't be cleaning this up. Hardest part is, to, is the woman who's teaching in here. Who are the teachers? Are they okay with uh, cleaning this out? And he said, probably not. <laughs> and I said, well, there's your big problem right there. We'll start praying on that end. Absolutely. Oh, it was a thrift store. It really was bad. I understand. The very first church I volunteered to be the preschool person because the pastor came and said, can you help us? And walked into the same situation. And I walked in his office and said, you've got to come see this. And it was, it was the same thing. And I said, what do I do? And he goes, he came back with black trash bags. And he put all of it in there and he said, I'm taking it to the dumpster. And I said, well, what about the teachers on Sunday morning? And he said, I'll handle that. <laughs> I, I love it. 
<laughs> that and is think, so great. I think they think those toys are still up in the attic of that church, but I know. Isn't that what you tell the kids at your house? It's like, <laughs> yeah, we've put those up. We'll get them out next year, next Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we bought all new, new stuff and put in that room. So it does make a difference. And sometimes you really have to also create mobile centers because I know just like we have at our smaller campus, there's not enough space to do like permanent. So we have mobile centers where it may come in a tub and you get that tub out and that's what you work out of or on top of the table with. So you can still have a lot of center options in a classroom, though you may not have a lot of floor space um, and can do that. So not every center is done on a table. No, that's on the floor. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, we also, um, if you have permanent fixtures in your classroom, like a sink, well, that may be where you want to put your art is closest to the sink. Good and idea. Yes. Make sure you put your nature by the window because you're going to need that window. Mm -hmm. And so kind of look at your classroom and just see what would fit best in this room with what already is permanently in the room. Absolutely. Um, one of the other things I always, there's a couple of things, noise level, you know, blocks are a lot noisier than the book area. And so you want to make sure you, you look at your noise level when you create those spaces so that they're not right next to each other. Um, something else we really have to watch to, in today's world is to make sure that we don't create blind spots. You want to be able to see your children from a bird's eye view at all times. And so when you arrange those centers and rooms, make sure you don't have any blind spots that you can see the kids. I so love that. That's a, good, that's a good warning, a good thing to notice. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> good. Um, one of the other things is, you know, um, when you create those learning centers, make sure you don't create like a runway so that you can, do, <laughs> you can start at one end of the room and run at a really quick pace to the other end. Create an obstacle course <laughs> so yes. that, that you can slow them down and then running is discouraged and that will help you out as a teacher. Um, uh, it will. I have told people you, you need to have your shelves or tables peninsula out from the wall because if everything's flat to the wall, then right. it's just a skating rink or running with the bulls. Yes, I mean, it's, it is. <laughs> you're it right. Is. Um, and there, there's ways you can define those learning spaces. Um, shelving units are always great to do that. Um, but you also can use those area rugs. Um, you can use Velcro on the floor. We don't put tape on the floor because we all know it leads adhesive on your mm -hmm. carpet that never comes up. Never. But never, ever. But if you'll if you put that Velcro down, it will make all the difference in the world. Yeah, no so. kidding. And you know, I just, I really agree with you. And I think probably the most underutilized piece of furniture, and it, it really is to me the most important, is the group time rug. It's yeah. true, rugs do create space. And I use my group time rug to be the block center because you have to build on the rug. You can't build off Absolutely. of the rug. And it creates an easy boundary for them with plenty of room. Absolutely. Well, um, some of the learning centers, you know, there's so many you can choose from. And, you know, we always know art is a big learning center. Everyone talks about art and it is a great creative outlet. And you use so many different mediums in that classroom. So art, that's a big one. Um, we like to avoid color sheets in that art center because we like kids to be creative. Yeah. Um, one of the things we've done in ours, one, if you paint, please paint. Oh, so many yeah. people avoid paint and it's painting so fun. But on Sunday morning, sometimes I know you don't have time for your projects to dry. And so wax paper is your best friend because you can tear off a piece of wax paper, put it on top of the paint and mom and dad can take the project home without getting paint everywhere. Oh, and then good. Dies, you peel the wax paper off. And good. Done. So that's a great little tip for your art center. Yeah. Hey, I just want to mention on that art center, it seems like a lot of boys don't really want to sit down and do. Yeah. Why, why not stand at the easel? Absolutely. If they could stand, it'd be better. Or maybe if you made it more like, you know, boys are kind of a contest. If things are a contest, girls, girls compare, boys are mm -hmm. contests. So um, if they had to stand behind the line and reach really far and try to paint or something, then Absolutely. it's 
kind of turn into some physical learning and they can still do art. Absolutely. Um, one of the things we've done in our uh, rooms here on the A campus and Coweta is we've created Play-Doh kits. I love Play-Doh. Play-Doh is a great calming tool. Yeah. Um, but classroom has a Play-Doh kit. And so depending on the age level is what goes in that Play-Doh kit. But oh, you can me. have anything from scissors and rolling pins and cookie cutters. And uh, I've even found some really cool cubes at like Walmart that have different shapes on different sides that you can use. But anything, oh, yeah. uh, you know, knives, little knives and from your plate, your home living area, you can put some of those knives in there. There's just so much fun you can do with those. Wow, that's good. So the kit is actually like a, a, a sterilite or a plastic shoe box or something. Yes. It's it got is. Everything. Yes, it is. And then you make your homemade Play Doh. Kool Aid Play Doh is my favorite. Mm, uh, it, it smells, smells good, good and the colors are vibrant. But you can you can Google that and get that recipe. Absolutely. But, uh, Don't, do you have to wear gloves when you do that? Like no, when you make it, or do you no. do it all with a spoon? All with a spoon, wooden spoon, and the electric skillet. Okay, everybody, we're going to we're gonna try to look up that Kool-Aid recipe, the Kool-Aid Play-Doh recipe, and I'll put it in the show notes, okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. Fun. It's a lot of fun. It makes your room smell great when you're making it. <laughs> um, but that's easy to keep in the Play-Doh kit. Um, yeah. Also, is that fresh-made Play-Doh, and they can use it. So do you usually put it in little uh, snack bags, zip I bags? Would, I usually put in a gallon Ziploc bag that we just keep in the room to oh, use. Oh, okay. And then if we send it home with the kids, yes, it goes in little snack bags and goes home. But we had, we, one year we had, everybody was getting sick. And so yes. I had to declare all Play-Doh that is used must go home with Very whoever nice. that played with it. Especially going into this season. Yeah. Especially. Yeah. It's not allergies, is it's nope. cold and it's, <laughs> and it's <Yes>. sickness. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Um, I love it. One of the other blocks, we all love blocks. Always a draw for the boys. Always. Um, I love it. Absolutely. Uh, that's how I get some of our teachers. You know, you can play with blocks. Do they get <laughs> to Sunday school? <laughs> so, so, but you keep the, like the wooden blocks or the blockbusters available for those ages. For the what, ages. what are some other, looks like, <laughs> wow, my clock is like, Chiming, isn't that great? <laughs> and so, so anyway, do you? What other blocks do you add to that? Well, I like to use now the foam and vinyl blocks are really a lot of fun because you can you can actually build those really tall, and when they fall down, no one gets hurt. Uh, and so like that. that's a lot of fun. Um, I also like to add animals, traffic signs. You know, in those area rugs, especially this time of year, you can buy great themed rugs at Lowe's, at Toys R Us, at Walmart, whether it's the city block or the ocean scene or a construction site, you can do so many things and theme that area to where they do build on that rug, but you can add stuff to that um, mm -hmm. to make that happen. Also people, especially with us coming into the uh, Christmas season, get your nativity scene and put that yeah. in there and let them build in that block area. But whatever your story is, you can add those figures or uh, items that you need that correlate with that story and do that in the block area. And the nice thing is it, it kind of lends itself to imitative play because they start taking on the role play of the different Absolutely. characters if we have those figures in there. So if they've built the stable and they... They say, you be, this is Joseph. Or maybe they won't even say, they'll just start being their voice and, and kind of making Absolutely. them talk to each other. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, I love that. Um, and there's always other kinds of blocks. You know, they make the blocks now that have like the styrofoam uh, beads in it, that kind of static electricity in between them. They also have colored water in between some of them. Um, so those are fun just to wow. add in there for something different. And um, you can't miss the Legos. I mean, no. please, Duplo, Duplo, Lego, all That's of those. Right. You can do all of that. And so there's lots of magnetic blocks are so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's, there's lots of places for those. But you can, yeah. the block area is underused with what the potential is, I think, in that yeah. area. I think it's wise to say when you add those kind of 
stand-up figures, cars, trucks, anything like that, you have to remove that and put them back up yes. when you're not using them or, or those boys will only gravitate to those Absolutely. and miss the other stuff because you've created a, a, a problem, you know, because it wasn't put up. Right. And I think, too, that's where you have to remember your, your learning centers are really meant for three to four kiddos at a time. And coming up with a system to where they rotate through those learning centers instead of staying put in one the whole time and learning to take turns mm -hmm. and, and experiencing all of those is a great way to do that. And, you know, one of the ways that I transition uh, preschoolers out of a, um, a center is just to say, um, okay, four-year-olds, you have four minutes and then it'll be time for someone else to have a turn so you can move on, choose something else. Okay, three more minutes, just two more minutes and count them down, and transition them out. Absolutely. Um, some of the other things like dramatic play, we love dramatic play. Oh, yeah. And especially with all the different stories that we teach and the things that we do, you can really, this can be a real transitional area. I mean, from mm -hmm. carpentry, um, you can have your little wood benches and your tools and your gog goggles and man, they can do all kinds of stuff with that. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever let them hammer golf tees into oh, a yes. stone or a box Absolutely. or nails, nails into a stump of wood? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a lot of fun. You can do so much. Um, kitchen and cooking, we all have home living, but you know, sometimes you can do teacher led events in those home living areas. You can cook. You know, I love cooking with preschoolers. I know. She's and the queen, everybody. She has incredible demonstrations, things you can do with really? kids. We'll have to get you on again to show us some of that stuff because yeah. I think you have discovered a really great teacher-led, like you said, right. activity in that. So, yeah, give us an example or something. So, you can, do, you can do that within those home living areas. And, again, you can correlate that right to what you're, you're teaching that day with what you're cooking and let them taste um, yeah. housekeeping. We love to, to teach them housekeeping. They mm -hmm. love to sweep. They love to dust. They love to do all of that. So um, Wet that's, wipes are your friend. Like, they like to use great. them. Now, I was in a conference one time where the, the leader actually said, get out those Clorox wipes. And I'm like, I wanted so bad to raise up and say, no, 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 but I didn't. <laughs> Let's use baby wipes. Uh, not that. Safer. <laughs> yes. Also, you know, shaving cream. I always loved using um, sensitive skin shaving cream in the classroom to clean our tables. Hey, it looks like Paula Lawson is trying to join us. Oh, sweet. <laughs> I'm going to have to. Hey, I'm going to have to let you join us later because we're finishing this one first. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> hey, how are you? Doing great. How are you? Good. So do I just click out? Yes, please. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, the timer, I gotta make a note of that. <laughs> yeah, are you gonna click out or do I have to click you out? I don't know how to, let's end that for her. Hold on just a second. I took a note of the time so he can edit this. <laughs> okay. I took a note of the time Paula entered. <laughs> <laughs> She's early. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure where we were, Gina. I do. Well, um, I'll let I you do it. Okay, um, grocery store is another fun one. They love doing grocery store. And there's so many stories that when God gives us food and, and you see the plants grow, and all that, it's a great opportunity to do the grocery store where they can pick um, the good foods and their nutrition. I puppets, like it. Yeah, puppets are one we don't use a lot, um, at least here very often. But if you still have those puppets, yeah. those are wonderful things that you can use in a small break because again, they're learning to just that uh, self Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> my kind of to role play and to and role play and that's puppets with that. so yeah, I like that yeah um we love sensory and you know we have children in our classrooms that sometimes they need just time in a bin of rice to play with and so there's way you know some people are wonderful that they get to have the water and sand tables 
but space doesn't always allow that much less storage of water and sand. But yeah. I have actually found some bins that I got at um, a school supply place that had um, what they're wonderfully shaped and they come in like the primary colors. And so you can use them and then put them away and they stack nicely and go on top of our shelves. Oh, um, nice. As well as like, we do like to get the good, you know, Rubbermaid bins and fill them with rice or beans or whatever. And it's a great thing to put on your shelf. Yeah, and you know what? We've got like the, those plastic, uh, rubber, plastic, whatever. And it's three drawers. I think they're yeah. like little. And so each one of them is pretty wide. And so we have rice in one, beans in one, corn great in one. Idea. Yeah. And so they just go right back on. Yes. Easy. Great idea, great storage idea, because yeah. our resource rooms sometimes are not large <laughs> enough. We run them. out of room. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I love the nature and science area, and that's probably one of the, the learning centers that we don't really tap into as much. Right. Um, but I love it because that's the opportunity that they get to have to really see the things, the wonders that God has created. And um, you can do that from earth and space to light and sound. Magnets are always fun to use. Um, I love, you know, they love seeing x-rays and seeing how God made them. Mm -hmm. And um, nutrition always, trees and plants. One of my favorite things I did when I taught pre-K was um, the cocoon to a butterfly. Oh, yeah. Oh, that is That's so much big fun. in our church weekday, too. Yes, yes I love that. And in Oklahoma, well, we love weather around here. That's true. <laughs> so we can always have better it's going to change <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly um but i just think it's important that they get to experience the wonder of god's world the world mm. that he created and that we get to be a part of and it's kind of I interesting it's, it's kind of interesting how nature items show up in all the other centers pretty absolutely. easily absolutely so having a nature shelf is awesome but experiencing and hands-on even might show up in art or it might be in puzzles or it might be in the blocks. I mean, it just keeps showing up. Absolutely. I actually, we actually had um, leaves and rakes in home living. So you had to rake the leaves because it was autumn. Absolutely. And now we're coming into the winter season where you can use your pine and your pine cones and all of yeah. that. Remember yeah. to make sure that you have kids that are not allergic to those things. True. Um, I have a child that was allergic to pine, and his wow. last name was Pine, and I felt so wow. bad. But it just one of your crazy. kids. One of my kids. This so, Gina. Um, oh my gosh. Know. <laughs> he grew up. Okay, so I got to tell you this story. I had an intern, and uh, it was around Christmas time, and we had a poinsettia that was given to us at the oh. preschool. <laughs> we set it on the preschool welcome desk mm -hmm. and um anyway you know poinsettia is poisonous plant yes. and uh so i asked the intern like do i need to get it out of here on the welcome desk what do i need to do and i said look it up see how much you have to actually eat of a poinsettia plant in order you know for it to be poison to be toxic yes. and so anyway he looked it up and he said it looks like you have to eat about three-fourths of the plant I said, well, that's a lot. It's not just lick a leaf and you die. And he said, no, you have to consume, you know, ingest most of the plant. I said, oh, well, I don't think that'll happen. So by the way, just in case, why don't you pick off a leaf and chew it? Let me see uh, and tell me if it tastes bad or good. And so he said, do I really have to? I said, yes, you're the intern. And so he picked off a leaf. And he had fun in his mouth and he started chewing and he said, eh, it's really bad. It's super bad. And I was like, oh, then the plant gets to stay on the welcome desk. <laughs> exactly right. If you're going to have to consume most of it and it tastes that bad, I think we'll be okay on the welcome desk. That's exactly right. That's good. Um, some of the others, just quick, music and movement. We love music. And again, I think you can use that throughout so many of the, the centers, but especially group time. Oh, um, yeah and do that and you can take change the words to the song to fit the story of the day or the activity you know clean up is one of our favorite songs in preschool and so it's a it's a great way and use the simple songs um that they could pick up on and just repeat i love it when the grandkids come home now and they are singing these wonderful little songs and then they you know trail off and even 
come up with more words to the songs, but. Oh, that's even better. And I may, I asked the grandkids to get on the hearth because that's our stage. Yes. The fireplace hearth and turn the lights on. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's important that, uh, that those, that when you're putting words into music and make those Bible, you know, scripture, whatever story, Bible story words go yeah. into those, they take it home with them. That's right. Yeah. And I love that because they're taking the gospel right into their own home. Amen. That's right. I love it. Um, of course, manipulatives, we all do that. You're sorting, you're, you know, all of those things are so much fun and you can do so much with them. I love the books, but the thing that we have to make sure is that the Bible is in the book area um, so that kids True. can pick it up and touch it and look at it. Because it's a, in preschool, it's a way to introduce what makes that book different from any other book. That's and right. so that's a great way to do that. I love Bible skills. I know you're big into Bible skills and do that yeah. well. And those need, that's a great place, a learning center in exactly. every classroom to learn the books of the Bible and to, mm -hmm. to be able to write down scripture. Yeah. And, and actually one of the earliest Bible skills is turn the page. Like they yes, want to turn the page like this, but right. to turn yes. the page. Turn the page. Yeah. And we, we kind of forget about all those parts. It's important. Absolutely. It's just teaching that respect for the Bible and what makes it different. Um, I love just the Bible verse memory, um, hiding their word, the word in their heart. No. Um, we have weekly verses, monthly verses, do that. Maps, you know, with school age children, especially when you talk about the stories in the Bible and they take a journey, have a map out so they can see this is where they started and trace to where they went and how far was that and what was the terrain like and to where it's visual and they can see that. They love maps. Yeah. And, be able and to globes. And globes. Love we've globes. had missionary speakers. We said, okay, we're right here and it's all yeah. the way around here. Absolutely. Around the world. Absolutely. Um, we all like to see that. We all do. Absolutely. And use, the thing I like to do is, have we used our five senses yes. in our classroom? Because yes. everyone learns differently. And um, that's why we have learning centers, because we all learn differently. We don't learn the same way. Sure. Um, we want kids to use their creative thinking. So much of what they play with today, there's no creativity to it. And they need to learn to do that. Um, <laughs> there's that clock again, sorry. No, you're fine. Um, they need to make choices and be able to make a choice. So yeah. much of the time, choices are made for them. And this is their opportunity to make a choice. And so I just have to say, if, if you're dealing with all kinds of, of um, uh, classroom behavior stuff, yes. are they getting enough choices? You may not have enough choices, and you may not be letting them choose the things that appeal to them the most. Because we all learn differently, just like you said. Mm -hmm. And so choices are really key. Absolutely. It's a great way for them to also build self-confidence. Again, so much time they, today, they don't get, their self-confidence is not built. And mm -hmm. doing those things within the learning center mm -hmm. builds their self-confidence. It does. And that's an awesome thing to do. They get so to don't use. forget to affirm them, to tell Absolutely. them what a good job. Absolutely. That really speaks to you. You want to try harder, do more. Absolutely. And they get to use their own ideas. You know, when they're in blocks building, they get to use their own ideas of how it's going to look. Uh, when they're getting to be in the art center and draw that out, however they're doing that, I'll, they can do that. I agree. Oh, this is work. so good. Um, and encouraging to work with others. We know <laughs> that sometimes, especially preschoolers, they don't necessarily always work well together. And so they're learning to do that. Um, mm -hmm. But more than that, they're learning by repetition, mm -hmm. but we also are giving them opportunity for more opportunities to hear the Bible story, to mm -hmm. the Bible verse, and all of that. Um, so I just feel like Deuteronomy 6, 5, 7 is such a, is a Bible verse I really, I love, and we know that verse, but I think anytime we're in the classroom, anything we do ought to be teaching children about the story that day about the Bible, about the gospel, about who God is and about who Jesus is and how he wants to have a relationship with them. Everything we do ought to point to Christ. We ought not to do anything in the classroom that doesn't have that message yeah. that we just, oh, well, I like to do this. So we're just going to do this. 
why is free it play free yes. play it's like no we have to be focused exactly. we have to focus and you know sometimes i think we forget as teachers that what we do in the classroom we're modeling for parents mm -hmm. because we want parents to learn to teach as they go yeah we want, we want kids to know when they see that beautiful color of the leaves turning on the tree we want them to remember that God made those trees and he made those colors and yeah. they kept from him. And so we have the opportunity to teach them. Good. Oh, wow. Encouraging to hear all this. Thank you so much, Gina. Yeah. This has been awesome and a great reminder because I think a lot of times we get laxed and we forget to plug into all of the great resources and opportunities that we have. And when we do, our, our preschool classroom just comes alive. Be, because we've engaged them so much better, so much better. Thank you so much for your time today. You are a gift to us. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. Well, everybody, we're glad that you joined us today. I hope that this has been an encouragement to you. I hope you'll share it with your preschool leaders. And by the way, as you are uh, thinking about Mr. Mark's classroom, sign up on there so that way you can get the free book. And there's a whole section about uh, learning centers, just like we were talking about, that would really benefit you. It's free. Just download it, print it off, and uh, maybe you can share it with your teachers and, and they can even get a copy of it as well. I'm so glad that you joined us today. We appreciate all that you're doing in kids ministry, and we want you to keep it up. Keep going. You're doing great. Your life in kids ministry is a gift, so go and make it count.